If you see that doesn't work, if you find a way to make it work. Why is the tracking you know, platform You know why, it, why it's funny? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everybody loves you when you have traffic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about crypto? Well, I have crypto. Let's um, get to the questionnaire, which consists of one question. Do your job. I mean, I'm doing mine. <laughs> Okay, so hi, Florin. Hello, Sasha. Thank you very much for agreeing to have a chat with us. Thank you for with, having me, with for me. inviting me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so you are one of the speakers of the AGS Expo. Yes. Um, have you had your panel yet? Yes, I had it already. Uh, it was, <laughs> I think, not that good, but <laughs> it's not me that I, uh, that I, I should judge that. I mean, after two years of uh, not being able to attend this kind of events, not speaking in public, I felt like rusty. Okay. <laughs> so, Did you yeah. miss it? Yeah, yeah. You I like public it. speaking? Um, I like it. I would like to improve it. I would like to be better on that. So it's one thing that I'm working with me, uh, with myself on, uh, about. Um, but, well, I'm comfortable when, it's, when it comes to interviews, mm -hmm. uh, but when I see people in the room, like many people, depends on how, how many people there are, are in the room. Well, they say it's always stressful when you go on stage, even if you don't, uh, even if you are not like popular for stage fright, it's still the adrenaline. Like, well, within the years, you, you, you kind of you get used to it, so okay. it becomes better and better. But you do know that everybody here is rusty because nobody had that much of speaking experience for the past one and a half years. Yeah. So, yeah. Beside this, uh, there is Nobody's going to judge. Um, yeah. Uh, beside this, uh, th there is another problem, let's call it, that I think that this uh, show is, uh, is kind of resolving. Mm -hmm. The fact that people for two years were um, teached to keep distance, mm -hmm. uh, not speak. Uh, mm -hmm. stay at whatever 1.52 meters apart of each other uh, they saw most of the time only their family so they are kind of reticent to have like one-on-one -on -one interviews mm -hmm. not like before where you're like having every, every 10 15 minutes mm -hmm. a meeting with a potential customer right Over now there, people are more reserved it's like right? uh, yeah i mean you feel it it's a different atmosphere but i think this is a huge step for the industry definitely hey guys just want to tell you that we are wearing masks all the time yeah. we took them off just for this interview so that you can see our adorable faces our adorable faces yeah so yeah we are safe and you should stay safe too wear a mask and sanitize your hands often but not too often <laughs> so what was your panel about what was the topic of your speech uh, the future of digital marketing and how we see it uh, post pandemic could you give us like a quick review of your speech, like bullet points? Well, I didn't have the speech because we were in four speaking to okay. this panel. Um, but uh, yeah, they asked me about uh, what, uh, what, how do I see the future of uh, uh, the digital marketing? And how do you see What it? do I um, think that will work, like uh, would, will, will worth promoting to, mm -hmm. make some, to make some money? And uh, basically, I, mm, what I see within my clients because we are providing the technology for affiliate networks and advertisers to promote their services. I see a large increase in e-commerce clients. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe that the future stays in e-commerce, uh, even with uh, the last problems that we had with the update from Facebook. Media buyers would know that. <laughs> uh, that you cannot track anymore iOS. Um, well, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. um, uh, even with that, I still think that the e-commerce it's uh, where affiliates should focus focus their their uh, their attention right now. I mean, it's people in uh, in the pandemic get more educated. Mm -hmm. They learn, especially in countries like Romania, Russia, Mold Moldova, whatever. They learn that using credit card is not that bad. Mm -hmm. They learn how to use it. I mean, my mom has 67. She never used the card online. Really. Yeah, and I heard her like, uh, Mom, I, buy, I bought a vacuum cleaner, whatever. I paid with the car. I said, wow. <laughs> so that's a big, that's progress. Yeah, that's that's a big progress, guys. That's this pandemic with the huge kick that we got. Actually, if you take it and you look at other way, uh, the other way around, it's a big progress that bring into our houses. I mean, they educated the people that they can buy online. Mm -hmm. they, can, they are using more often the credit cards and jump on that create offers create products so mainly you can say that 
um, this time of the pandemic, it was good for traffic manager? Well, it was stable, not good, because we had a lot of businesses that crashed. Okay. I mean, a lot of guys that were doing mostly mobile content, yeah. uh, digital content, people. Yeah, they spend more money on digital content, but not on all kind of digital content. Then we had some COD guys, guys that were selling uh, stuff online mm -hmm. that had a, at the beginning of the pandemic, they were destroyed. They mm -hmm. didn't make one sale because the courier companies couldn't, yeah. couldn't deliver. So <laughs> we had a situation when a few clients just asked us, look, can you like suspend the platform for the next three months because we cannot operate? Mm -hmm. What can you do to say to this client? No pay me. Of Did course. you offer that option? Yeah, yeah. We Did just you know, step look, forward? leave it over there. I mean, we whatever. It's the server is still, I mean, it's still there. It's, okay. Well, what it would change for me? I mean, in their eyes, you will be like the guy that understands his business, and that will always support him and will be with him there, helping him to cross over the difficulties that he can encounter in his path. Have you lost any clients? We lost a few. We lost a few guys, uh, a few guys that promised that they are reinventing themselves. Mm -hmm. I hope they will because they were nice guys. Uh, they are nice guys. Uh, but we gain a lot of new blood, fresh blood okay. as well. I mean, since our solution, it's, uh, it's not very cost, uh, it doesn't cost very much, mm -hmm. no. So many clients that we, uh, we, we received in the past period what was, were clients that they were cutting costs in mm -hmm. their company. So they said, okay, I have this solution that I pay 1,500 per month and this this guy that I could pay 400. Okay. I could give her a try. Okay. Maybe I can save some money. And mm -hmm. that was our point where people understood that even if a service is cheaper, doesn't mean it's, it's a bad service. Mm -hmm. It can be cheaper for many reasons. Mm -hmm. It can be cheaper because you are able to build with technology that doesn't involve too much server resources, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, it can be very cheap because you automatize the tasks in inside your company where you don't need 200 developers mm -hmm. to develop a few features. So I'm kind, I'm kind of proud of, of that because many, many of the clients, the new clients that we, we, uh, we got uh, were like, well, we are kind of surprised about what we found in, <laughs> in your service. So that's, that's, a, that's a big... Yeah, th th that's like a very good deal, you know, yes. compared to those two prices, like 1500 and 400 oh, yeah, I would yeah. definitely pick the, the latter. <laughs> mm, well, you know, mm, especially uh, the competitors we have, have also a huge branding behind. So we mm -hmm. are kind of new, not really new, but 2016 is not a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It is, but not very much. And um, basically their branding uh, is great. Mm -hmm. We are building it. Okay, we are on the path. And people go there, they, they will not trust anyone with their data. And it's normal at the end, you can mm -hmm. understand that. I mean, they, they are afraid that they will find their data, whatever, spread in the world, sold, yeah. so sold to some whoever. black mm -hmm. hat forum or whatever. I can understand that because at the beginning we started with an affiliate network. So we use third party platforms, we know the difficulties we encounter uh, while using them. We know we didn't trust either. Yeah. So I'm trying to kind of remove that. And I'm trying to, even if I'm the CEO of the company, many times I provide support mm -hmm. to, to the clients. I mean, that's, I have no that's problem. That's awesome. It, it gives you like direct access, access to your clients and you yes. know what they want, you know exactly. what their difficulties are. That's, that's amazing, yeah. Even if some clients consider that uh, bad, they said, okay, I had a few, I would not, say any names, but I had a few potential clients. We didn't uh, uh, collaborate at the beginning from Italy. And they said, okay, but in a company like yours, the CEO is providing support and is providing, they said, what's the problem? I like, to, I like my work, I love it. I like to be in contact with the people like this. I can, uh, I can find out your problems and solve them. This is what we do, we solve problems. How can... And I you mean, don't get disconnected from them when you are developing features for yourself, exactly. how you see it, but you do it for the market. Exactly, I mean, I, I, the market is not how I see it, it's mm -hmm. how you see it. Exactly, yeah. So, okay, you could report that to, a, to, a, to an employee I have, and that guy maybe has a bad day, okay, you know what? Okay, I wrote this down in a ticket yeah, so or probably, whatever. Probably he imagined some little yeah. office yeah. where you were sitting at the exactly. little small desk doing exactly. everything. I mean, I don't care what, what they think. I, I, I just want my product, our product, to be a better product, mm -hmm. to make a difference in the market. Now, we, we, we achieve it, I mean, step by step. 
we have a lot to work. And How I long think have you been on the market with Traffic Manager? Oh, traffic Manager starting 2016, okay. uh, but in the affiliate marketing industry starting 2008. I started as an ACO, I was an affiliate. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, um, I've noted, not noticed it, sorry. <laughs> I've noticed it several times that people with SEO background, they somehow grasp this industry much, much, much faster because there are lots of similar terms and like you dive into it easily. Have you noticed anything like that? Was uh, it easy for you to enter the sphere? It was easy because I had traffic mm -hmm. and everybody loves you when you have traffic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, uh, I got the privilege to have a lot of uh, connections in, uh, in, what, in the biggest companies, advertising companies at that, in those periods. So I learned really fast how they are making money. If you would have to explain to a six-year-old what traffic manager does, how would you do it? What would you say? Six-year-olds. Six-year-olds. <laughs> well, six-year-olds in, in our day, six-year-olds are quite educated. That's true, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, well, traffic manager will give you the opportunity, my son, <laughs> to sell the lemonade you have online instead of selling, selling it in front of your house. Okay. Is that good enough? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not detailed enough. Not what, detailed. If, what if a six-year-old asks you a follow-up? How, how, how can I put my lemonade? <laughs> how can I put my lemonade on an online marketplace? Well, if you're, clever, if you're clever, you will hire a developer that knows how to build a landing page for your product or a, or a sales funnel. Sales and funnel is too complicated, but go on. Landing page or a, a sales page, a page, uh, this, uh, product page, product description page. Great. <laughs> okay. Uh, you hire a guy that knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. Then you hire another guy that know how, knows how to work with a tracking platform. Mm -hmm. What is a tracking platform? <laughs> <laughs> what is a tracking you platform? Know, you know why, why it's funny? <laughs> I, will, I will just have a short break here. Uh, when I was uh, getting back from the pandemic, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was living in Lisbon. Okay. So I was getting back with my car in Romania after six months of pandemic or something like that. And they stopped me at each border. Mm. Spain, they stopped me. France, they stopped me. Italy, everywhere. All the countries that I encountered, all the boards stopped me where I'm coming from, where I'm going to. In France, the police filter stopped me. And uh, he asked me the same question. <laughs> he said, what are you doing? No, he said, where are you coming from? From Lisbon. What do you do in Lisbon? I said, I have a, a company there. Okay. What does your company do? Uh, we build tracking platforms. What is a tracking platform? <laughs> I said, I look at him and I said, really? Do, do you have the time? No, actually, I said, I said it's, uh, it's a platform that will help you sell your products, with, uh, that will uh, help you sell the products by using online affiliates or online traffic. He said, what are affiliates? And I look at him I said, really? And he started to laugh. He said, no, no, come on, go. <laughs> so I remind me, I, it was a... Actually, this is a great setup. Like, instead of saying, explain it to a six-year-old, I should say, explain it to a police officer exactly. who's asking you questions at the border during the pandemic and you really want to go home. Yeah, and that will probably close you 14 days in some camp. Yeah, forever. if you don't explain it, <laughs> good enough for him. Yeah, that, yeah, was, cool. that was a nice, a nice experience. <laughs> yeah, helps you summarize mm. everything. So let's um, get to the questionnaire, which consists of one question. Okay. <laughs> what are your predictions for 2020, uh, 2022? I'm sorry, 2020 is over. Thank God. What are your predictions for 2022? What do you think is going to happen at the affiliate marketing scene? What trends are emerging right now that you see um, uh, that going to stick? in the next year? Well, as I said before, I think the client now is way more educated. If the advertisers, the companies that are building products are, will be able to adapt and to create faster products for the, for the, for the client, client oriented. And now with the fact that you can kind of start building with credit card easier than before, uh, I think E as I said, e-commerce stuff would be the future, in my opinion. E-commerce stuff, digital products, not that much. Mm, they will still work. I mean, maybe high-end products like seminars or webinars or... What about crypto? Well, I have crypto. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Did you saw the Lamborghini park outside with the huge Bitcoin marks on yeah. it? Yeah, I, I will post that later in my Instagram. It's it's like hold. I was I was I just hold had hold the as as the uh, as to the, the moon. Crib. Hold the. I, I just like had another speaker who said it was his. I'm I'm not sure that's true, but yeah. Oh, okay, maybe <laughs> maybe it was. Maybe it's yours. I think it's the future. I think Bitcoin, as we see it right now, it will be um, a point of reference. Mm -hmm. Like today, as we it has been for the past ten years, I guess. Uh, yeah, but in the crypto market, uh, today in the fiat market, we have uh, gold. Everybody refers to themselves as uh, the value of the gold. Okay. okay. I think that's the the future of Bitcoin. I don't think B Bitcoin will ever disappear. I mean, it, it was the first, and it will remain. I think we will arrive in a point where we will not trade Bitcoins anymore. We are trying to solve as many problems as we can from the affiliate, uh, affiliate uh, industry, right? And one of them is payments. Mm -hmm. Payments nowadays includes also crypto. Mm -hmm. uh, we are getting our license we're, uh, through, a, through a company partner. Mm -hmm. We're getting a few licenses around Europe because now it's, you need to have one license for Europe, another license for whatever, Canada, whatever. It's kind of complicated. We're studying the stuff. But yeah, it's the future. We want to adapt it fast, to adapt to it fast. We want also to provide to our clients the possibility to not only track the client, the affiliate traffic and the sales and optimize and so on, but we want also to give them the possibility to pay their affiliates because we see that is a huge problem uh, among our clients. Mm -hmm. And I see guys that are doing, I mean, they, they write me. We, we speak often. Many of my clients are also close friends that I, with which I share ideas about what we should do to make, make mm -hmm. it better and so on. I said, look, man, payments is killing us. I mean, if years ago you would pay, I don't know, half of your profit to a tracking platform, now mm -hmm. is not the case anymore because there are many competitors and competition is good mm -hmm. for the industry, but now payments is. It's very difficult. Uh, especially after Brexit, since a lot of UK companies that and provide, we're providing payments into mm -hmm. Europe, now are not really able to provide them anymore like mm -hmm. before. Uh, and also the reticent, um, the um, difficulty of the banks to understand the affiliate and the online industry. They don't understand it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you do a payment, you have, a, you have to follow. They need to understand the money, where they are, they are coming from and where they're going to, right? An affiliate network will have a contract or a client agreement with the affiliate, they will issue a credit note, an invoice, whatever, or the affiliate, if it's a company, would upload an invoice in the platform and they would pay. The bank doesn't understand that because, I mean, for them is to, um, the term of affiliate marketing is too wide. Mm -hmm. Okay, what kind of affiliate marketing? We, we still have to speak with people around their f 60s mm -hmm. that are in the top, uh, let's say, uh, management positions mm -hmm. in the bank. And if, you can, we, if we cannot convince those guys that we are not uh, uh, laundering money, mm -hmm. we cannot pay. So this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to, to, to solve this problem as well. You should and practice that, that speech to a six-year-old more often. I think it's going to help <laughs> with a lot of those banking meetings. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, sell early money, then uh, get uh, paid in crypto. <laughs> okay. Do you have a, a crypto wallet? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> nice. This is good. Yeah. Do you? Yes. Which one? I uh, use, uh, well, I have Binance, that it's okay, and then I have Trust Wallet. Okay. Trust Wallet is good. Trust Wallet. Were I you thinking it. about Ledger, but hardware? I have it. I, I, I keep my Bitcoins there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Where uh, do you store your keys? <laughs> In the safe. Oh, okay. <laughs> At the okay. end, you still need a safe to store it. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, well, we don't know where you live. You could live anywhere from, from Portugal to Romania. Where in the past two years, I changed like four countries. So. Exactly. Where are, you, where are you taking your safe with you? No, with it's... Your Bitcoin uh, it's uh, keys? Well, I, I, when I traveled for a few months, I, 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 I take them with me. Because okay. sometimes, you know, you, you want to buy more, you want to sell, you want... Are you just hodling? Or you no, are? yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Now I don't want to touch them until they reach 100,000 and it, it will happen. Maybe in one year from now. Really? Yeah. Do you think it's a good time to invest right now? Yes, yeah. definitely. I mean, this is the second good time. <laughs> 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 if you didn't catch the first wave, yeah. this is the second good time. I mean, imagine two years, three years ago, the mm -hmm. Bitcoin was 3,000. Yeah, I remember I mean, that. it had like $19,600 or something, or mm -hmm. 18600 something, something like that. I had friends that 
they sold their cars, they sold their businesses to buy Bitcoin because they were, they were thinking that it would fly to whatever. But mm -hmm. then down to three or four thousand mm -hmm. for one year. Yeah. And look at it now. It's okay. The same yeah. amount of Bitcoin. <laughs> but not everybody is ready for that. I've just uh, um, talked about it with the previous speaker. Not everybody is ready for that crazy volatility because a lot of people start to panic sell and they are not not equipped, you know, to expect for the dip and buy the dip. Yeah, you're right. But I think I, I, I was uh, one month ago, I was in London and uh, the six, 17 years old uh, daughter of a business partner of mine came into the house and said, ah, my friends are investing in crypto. So what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a big deal now. So then I started to investigate a bit more and I saw that these guys from, I don't know if you know the project, Safe Money is called. Yeah, I think I heard of it. Yeah. It's, I mean, these guys with the influencers, with uh, the power of social media, mm -hmm. they reach like 2 million or something mm -hmm. of, of uh, wallet holders. Mm -hmm. Now it's down as, as a value, but I think it will grow up again. But it's a meme coin, just like Dogecoin. Mm -hmm. Come on, look at Dogecoin. Elon Musk is playing with it. Yeah. A few tweets, but it has, up, few it has gained down. a lot of um, mass, not mass, it has um, increased in value drastically after he started publicly supporting it. Yeah, but then, I mean, what's the value? It's very little. I mean, the actual it's, value. It's, it's for tipping, I think, mm. online. On no, Reddit. but I mean, what's the value? What do you have behind? Mm -hmm. If I lose my money, where can I go and get them back? I, I don't think you can. Exactly, so people are getting kind of used to that. Mm -hmm. So I think in the next years, crypto is the future. Let's try to get back to the affiliate side of business, yes. even though crypto is super exciting. I absolutely totally agree with you. Speaking of the affiliate marketing scene and yes. the next years, um, the trends for the next years. So you said that e-commerce is going to be big? I, I, in my opinion, yeah. Okay, so it's going to get even bigger. Do you have any like tips? for affiliates or like um, pinpoint some growth points for them? Well, here is difficult because it depends on the affiliate. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the ACO guys, the guys that are doing ACO, I cannot give them tips because <laughs> when you give tips to an ACO, it's, sometimes it's a thing of luck, sometimes, but you, you always need to like study. Mm -hmm. You need to study, you need to test. In, in ACO, everything is about testing. Mm -hmm. Test, test, test. Don't lose your faith. I mean, I know how it is to lose traffic. I've been with my business like close to zero many times. But if you want a good example of not giving up, we have the light bulb. Okay, now we're doing neon smores. The inventor is Abraham, uh, what's the name? It was Edison. Uh, Edward, Edison, Thomas exactly. Edison. Edward, Edward, uh, Thomas Edison, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb. I think he tested like 70,000. No, 70,000 materials. Oh, okay. I think something like that. I think I heard something either five or 10,000. Okay. And when asked um, about that, he said, it's not that I failed 10,000 times. Exactly. I found 10,000 ways exactly. that it doesn't work. Exactly. I mean, you need to see that one. But can you imagine trying even 5,000 times, I think? 5,000 times? 5,000 websites, 5,000 <laughs> different strategies. Come on. I mean, that, that's for me, it's a good example. Uh, so never give up. Mm -hmm. That's one. Adapt with the market. If you are doing Facebook marketing, try to comply because the black hat kind of period when you could do stuff the with cloakers mm -hmm. and uh, it's kind of going down with the AI. Think? Yeah, with the AI, it's, 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 it's getting more difficult. It's not accessible to anyone anymore. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if you are a huge company, yeah. If you are a huge company, I don't know you. But you know that there is like a huge ecosystem of products, services that provide all of the possibilities for affiliates to do that. You know, yeah. like anti-detect browsers, like you name it. Like there are a lot of services that are doing we, that. But you still think that's the past? Not the past, but it's not accessible to everyone anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I am addressing right now to I don't know, ten thousand affiliates, let's say, uh, within them we will have maybe 100 that have really good infrastructure and they could do that. But what about the other guys? Mm -hmm. So if you see that doesn't work, if you find a way to make it work, that's fine. 
but try to stick to the rules and try to promote safe products. Build a story, I mean, you guys know that. Build a story for each product, a own story, not the story that the advertiser is selling if you want to make some <laughs> sales. Take very uh, good care of the landing pages. Mm -hmm. I mean, even before we're speaking at the panel, uh, we're giving some example of why uh, affiliates fail to sell. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of examples, like uh, I see a lot of uh, guys that are just putting their product on a landing page that is not optimized at all. I mean, in terms of loading speed, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing they come and say, okay, the tracking, that's, that's the tracking doesn't SEO work. That's your background talking right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the first thing they, 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 they do is come and the, truck, the tracker doesn't work. Why? I'm not selling. Okay. Then I take the whole funnel and I take a look with the guys or, or alone sometimes. I look at the landing page, 10 seconds to load, or 11 or 12. I'm in Romania, we have a really, really huge uh, internet speed. I mean, mm -hmm. our bandwidth is really great. And then I call the guy, and really call him in Skype or whatever, and I show him on the phone okay. or sharing screen. Like, I said, just imagine if I in Romania have this problem, and you're in Italy, mm -hmm. where the internet in Italy, it's, it's very 20% bad. of what we have in Romania. That guy will see your page in 30 seconds. Do you think he will stick on the landing page? No. Do your job. I mean, I'm doing mine. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, pay very much attention to the technical things mm -hmm. in your sales funnel. Just test. There are a lot of shortcuts you could take over there. There's a, a thing I think is called Hotjar. Mm -hmm. You can place it on your landing page and mm -hmm. you can see how much the, the clients, the user are scrolling, mm -hmm. where they are going out. You can see whatever they are doing. You can optimize. Mm -hmm. I mean, use those. But it's like a heat map, right? Yeah, yeah, heat map. You can see, and there are a lot of, uh, of uh, similar products like that. Uh, there are products that can tell you when your landing page is down, uh, where you can receive a message on your SMS. It's okay, the server is down, you are not selling, so stop the traffic, you don't, don't waste money. Okay. You need to kind of find these small shortcuts that will automatize your tasks a lot mm -hmm. and will uh, help you uh, grow the business, scale it step by step. Where do you think affiliates could learn about those things? Like, imagine you don't know about it and you are, want to get into this business or scale what you're already having. Where would you know about that? Like, um, where would you recommend going and looking for that information? Well, there are, there are a, few, a few forums. Uh, I can mention one that I know and I'm also good. Uh, I know also the owner. It's called I am Attila. Mm -hmm. Attila is, uh, uh, just search I am Attila on Google. Yeah, yeah, I know him. We've yeah, it's, spoken. It's, it's, yeah. it's a great guy. And I, mm, I mean, he has some really great content over mm -hmm. there. Before his forum, there was another one that was kind of interesting. I think it's not really good right now. There are a lot of Telegram groups. Mm -hmm. Just try to search affiliate marketing, but try to avoid the spammy ones. I mean, you can find some all the first best, it's just copy pasting messages, how to get rich in 30 days or whatever stuff. Uh, Don't you think that affiliate marketing is actually um, the industry in general? Uh, since there are a lot of gray areas which haven't been defined yet, haven't been verbalized yet. Uh, like it's like, it's like <laughs> we're not going there. <laughs> no, no. Um, that it's very, uh, um, it's like Wild West. Not anymore. Mm -hmm. It's better now. I mean, in the times I've been at the beginning uh, of my journey as an affiliate, those were really wild times. I mean, and the guys before me said the same for their period. Okay. So. Uh, I remember there were some offers, mobile uh, billing offers. Mm -hmm. Basically, you would enter in the website to check the weather and your phone would be billed. Mm -hmm. Like, for, I don't know, uh, see hot girls That's online, whatever. Very bad for karma. Yeah, that was a, a huge thing for years. I mean, mm -hmm. Italy, Germany. Germany was one of the bigger, biggest ones. UK. Uh, a lot of countries that had this uh, that gave this solution to, to, the, to the advertisers to bill uh, via the career, the mm -hmm. phone of the credit. Basically, mm -hmm. you would, you would uh, see that your money are gone. And that was really bad. I mean, bad. It's kind of hypocrisy. Well, it's, it's because an ethical <laughs> dilemma. I think everybody should yeah, decide it for themselves. Exactly. It's, it's not bad, but that was Wild West, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Now it's everything. You need to work more and you should gain less. <laughs> I mean, Expect you, to gain less, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I heard somebody saying that um, the general trend 
that's going to persist in 2022 is that traffic is going to, like good traffic is going to get more and more expensive. Of course. Because now also the tools that are generating that traffic are kind of, or, or, kind of overrated. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do we have? We have pop-ups mm -hmm. that are kind of intrusive. We have push that was working fine till, I mean, one year ago or something, push traffic. Now it's kind of, mm, people are already used to it. They don't either read the, app, the notification of their own apps because they are thinking of that they are receiving some, some uh, ad again. Banners are still the ones, maybe uh, native traffic or will still be there. But yeah, it would become harder and harder to, to find the real quality traffic. And now let's face it, 60-70% maybe of the networks out there have bot traffic in them. Really? In my opinion, yeah. Did you ever have, speaking of bot traffic, did you ever have any problems with fraud? And with, with, sorry? With fraud. We, when uh, at the time uh, when we were um, when we launched our affiliate network, yeah, we had, especially on the CPL field, mm -hmm. not only traffic. But this is how tra how we started with the tracking solution. We first had an affiliate network, mm -hmm. and then after we, after that we sold it, and we remain with the we sell the concept. Mm -hmm. So we saw the we we. We had problems, yeah, and they are getting, they were getting, and they are getting they're even getting now. They're getting smarter. Yeah, I they're see like it with dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. You know, they're getting smarter and more dangerous. I see it with the clients we have because we have also an anti-fraud solution. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we can see these uh, these clients that are going to say, man, I think the we should we should do something better. Like what? I mean, what can you do? You can track the mobile device. You can track the battery level of that phone you can track you can track many things but mm -hmm. they are getting so so smart mm -hmm. and there are a few things that are still helping that are still helping us to to um, to prevent that to happen like in a really big uh, big big way mm -hmm. i would not say it right now <laughs> you know we have a few secrets to still detect fraud but it's getting harder and harder mm -hmm. uh, with clicks okay everybody knows about the click farms mm -hmm. uh, What's the point? I mean, between having a click farm and you have some software that is trained to click, you can train, you can build that software to do some subscriptions as well. Mm -hmm. And I think the worst and the, 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 the most dangerous one is the affiliate, the affiliates. I will not really call them affiliates, but fraud, but fraud people that are doing fraud with uh, stolen credit cards. Oh, okay. That's the most dangerous one because it's, uh, I see it in a few clients, we cannot detect that. I mean, I don't know, I think they are going into forums and are posting like, okay, do a subscription here, I give you the card and I give you 10 euros or whatever. So they are, I think that's the level mm -hmm. they are going to. And the only way to detect it is to receive a faster feedback from the merchant account that mm -hmm. you have, the one that is processing your card. So. An advice for the advertisers that are doing, uh, <laughs> that are selling services uh, with their, uh, and they are billing via credit card, build, build a really nice solution with your, mer with your, pro uh, with your merchant account provider. Mm -hmm. Let's call it like that. Because uh, that would be the only way to, to save you from uh, <laughs> some, some losing nice lots of money. Yeah. You mentioned that one of the biggest challenges right now is the payments. Yes. Um, who do you think are the biggest players and why cannot they fulfill the need? Right now the biggest player in my opinion is TransferWise. Mm -hmm. TransferWise build a great concept, I love them, I mean I, I use them uh, with all my companies. Uh, but they are still far away to understand the concept or they don't want that slice of, the of the business. I mean, I think they are kind of if it's too complicated, we don't want it. Mm -hmm. And I understand them. I mean, come on, they have... How is it complicated for them? If it's like a financial solution, they should be equipped to operate in areas like this. Well, you, when you are a financial solution, you have responsibilities. I mean, you need to do the KYC of the client. Mm -hmm. You need to understand who is that client. Mm -hmm. KYC is the abbreviation for know your customer. So you need to know, like, you need to load your passport or whatever, mm -hmm. proof of address and so on. And that's not a problem. I mean, but those things can also be faked, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a guy with Photoshop would do it right mm -hmm. away. So 
when it's complicated to understand the business uh, that are paying them, mm -hmm. I think they just don't want to... Get involved yeah, with something that can potentially be money laundering? Yeah, mm -hmm. because they could lose their license. I mean, would you lose your license to make an extra, I don't know, 5 million per month and lose it for the whole, I don't know, 100 million? 10% mm -hmm. of your business? No, no one will do it. But That's um, why there is... Sorry that I interrupt. That's, that's sure. why there is the, the the there is there is place in the market for uh, local players, like mm -hmm. players that know the business and know how to expose it to the banks. Mm -hmm. But I also think that like traditional services, financial services, they don't actually realize how big the market is. No, they don't. How huge no, the affiliate marketing uh, no. share of business is. Otherwise, they would just <laughs> jump and right back into the pool. And right, it's growing. Right and it's growing. Like month by month. That's why we want to get our license. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> yeah. I mean, solving a problem and making money at the same time, nothing back with that. Why not? Exactly. <laughs> well, actually, I think that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, Thank you very much for agreeing to talk. This was actually very exciting, and I think it was the longest interview really? that we had before. Yeah, it was the longest. I think I'm going to repurpose the hell out of this interview. And would you be available to make like some joint content for, for media? Because you named so many best practices, and I'm sure that our audience, which consists mainly of affiliates, would be super interested in that because <coughs> we want to compete with Amatila <laughs> at some point. But sure, and uh, I just want, to, I mean, you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Simovich Florian, my name. Okay. Throw questions. If I have time, I reply. I don't have any problems with that. If some of our readers want to reach out, would that no be fine? No problem, yes. I mean, I'm not the kind of guy that will be picky and, uh, you know, ah, I don't reply to these persons because they are... Yeah, that makes you stand out. Mm, no, I'm, I'm okay because I've been there. I've been a simple guy, simple affiliate, starting from scratch. I was doing something totally different before going into the affiliate marketing world. I like know how it is. I was building houses. I was a constructor. Really? But I was, yeah, yeah. Were you like a blue collar or the worker actually? No, the worker. Really? Yeah, yeah. Insane. The worker, the one that were handle, was handling the bricks and the stuff and okay. the mortar. Yeah, really. I did it for that's several, several years. That's, a, that's a, oh gosh, it's an excruciating job. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, taught me uh, taught me a lot. I mean, I have a backup. <laughs> if something happens in this world and another pandemic, you can pandemic, always put bricks together. <laughs> exactly, I can build houses <laughs> as well. So, well, actually, that's very useful if we have an apocalypse, an actual apocalypse, you know, and all that internet shit I goes down. I you can build not, houses. Not, I hope not to. Uh, Anytime not soon. Be needed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> not, not before you sell your bitcoins. Mm, yeah. Or oh, well, if the internet crashes, no bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the, yeah. So I understand the, the the things that I mean. Sometimes some guys, a lot of them are there. They're just trying to be an affiliate, and after a few months or whatever, this is bullshit. I don't want to continue. Sometimes people are writing me like in private messages, and they ask it. They ask me like a few questions. Look, what do you think about that, or whatever? They asking like, how where should I start? Mm -hmm. Well. Where should I start? This is a question that everybody's asking. Like, <laughs> I can put it here as well. Invest in yourself, read a bit. Mm -hmm. Read a bit about doing business online, find publications, find materials. You cannot start by uh, waiting uh, for an idea of a friend uh, that never had to do with online business. That he, he heard about a shoes company will, uh, will make money if they go online. That's not the way to do the business. Mm -hmm. I spent two years of my life doing two jobs, the construction one, and when I was coming home, I was studying affiliate marketing, two years. Never gained one penny. After two years, my life changed. You need to do something. Mm -hmm. You need to start from somewhere. You need to move yourself. That's gold. That's a very optimistic point, and this is where we're going to finish, because I really like this setting, <laughs> you know. The vibe is awesome <laughs> right now. So thank you very much for agreeing to talk. As you see, Florin is super approachable, an amazing yes. speaker. Thank, thank you. you very much and have a great time here at the conference. You too. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you guys for, uh, for... It was a nice chat. Really yeah. nice, really interesting. Mm -hmm.